Pawns are as critical in Dragon's Dogma 2 as picking your own vocation and choosing the wrong pawns with the wrong inclinations, specializations, or other factors can really hinder your experience. So rather than doing that, I'm gonna help you make the right decisions today. Let's go. Put your pawn ID in the comments so we can all share each other's pawns. That really sounds weird, but how to pick the right pawn comes down to a couple of factors. Three factors, I actually think. The first being the pawn's vocation, but more importantly, the skills they have equipped, the inclinations, and the specializations. More on these three shortly. But before we get into that, you can do an advanced search on vocations, inclinations, and the likes, and you can then filter based on specializations to see what specializations certain pawns have. If you're looking for certain ones, or you're looking for certain vocations, or inclinations, etc. A pro tip here in general is that if you have any friends on the same platform, you can summon their pawn and use them for free, even if they are a higher level than you. So if you've got a friend that's, you know, finished the game or is significantly further than you, you can always summon their pawn for free and be able to use it regardless of if it is a high level, so it won't cost you any rift crystals. And you can continually do this, like as they're, you know, they level up, right? You can continually dismiss their pawn and then resummon them at the higher levels. It is really advisable to update your summon pawns often so that they maintain their level with you and their effectiveness, but also also, it's good advice here that to grab pawns that are of higher level than you, and that will help you then not only have to update them as often, but it's more than likely that they've completed quests that you'll come across as their Risen's probably a little bit further in the game, so they can help you with that thing as well. And you can always see what quests your pawns have done in your quest list. You'll be able to see if there's like a little pawn symbol next to them, and it'll say one or two or your main pawns they've done it with someone else. So let's get into the three factors, starting with vocation. Now, vocations with pawns, it's definitely important, right, to make sure you've got a good balance of vocations but what's actually important isn't necessarily the vocation it's the skills that they have applied and to a lesser extent the augments for example right like i might tell you to use a fighter pawn because you want to have a fighter pawn that can tank with you know that sort of like kit in your party or a mage that can do healing but the thing is if their main player, their Risen, hasn't actually assigned them those skills, there isn't much point in having them in your party. And you will come across pawns that just will have like the default skill and no other skills applied. Like they haven't actually been updated correctly. So you really should be checking that before you're just picking any pawn off the old block. Generally, I would say when you're looking at each of the vocations, there's probably a couple of skills that you want to like keep an eye out for. Your mileage may vary. Like you might like lean towards other things than me. For fighters, you want a tank that can use shield summon to taunt enemies towards them for thieves they're like melee damage deal dealers but the ensnare skill is really good as it has a lot of crowd control ability from that so having one with that is good for mages the they're really support healers right so you want to make sure they've got those heals equipped as well as the weapon enchant so you can imbue your weapons with elemental effects archers are really just like ranged damage dealers as long as they haven't got like those bow skills that require them to use specific arrows applied then you should be fine there warriors are melee damage dealers that do more damage than fighters because they're more focused on the DPS, but they can taunt with bellow. So it might be good to grab ones that do have bellow. And sorcerers are really just like the damage dealing equivalent of the mages, right? Their main focus is on damage dealing in combat. But just make sure before you pick any of the pawns that you are checking to see, you know, what skills they have equipped, what their augments are, that they've actually got some equipped as well. And you can then be able to sort of make that decision about whether that's the pawn you want to grab or you want to grab someone else. Don't waste those hard earned rift crystals. Pawn inclinations is the second category here. Now, this is the general demeanor of the pawn. It impacts their voice, the way they speak to you and the other pawns, as well as some of their like combat effectiveness and depending on what they do. Now, there's four of the options here. Kind-hearted will prioritize support and they're quick to aid allies. Simple are curious and adventurous and they enjoy exploring and gathering items, so they're more likely to pick up items for you. Calm is more prioritizing defense to ensure survival, so they won't necessarily you know charge into the middle of things. They'll try and support and and like play for their own survival run away a little bit more straightforward uh candid and impulsive and they will literally charge into the middle of combat and tackle fierce foes so you definitely want to consider these inclinations when you're looking at not only your main pawn but as well as the pawns that you are summoning because say if you've got let's say a mage healer that is straightforward that's going to charge into the middle of combat and prioritize fighting fierce foes doesn't really help you necessarily when you want your mage to actually be healed 
feeling you and supporting the team. So you want to make sure that you're aligning their inclinations correctly. You can actually change your main pawn's inclination if you've picked wrong here. At the vendor in Vernmouth at the main rift stone, there are rift essences that you can buy from him. And at a campsite, you can then talk to your pawn and you'll be able to have them use this and it will change their inclination. Also, a little tip here as well is that if you want to change your appearance or your, your pawn's appearance, you can buy an art of metamorphosis from him as well with some rift crystals. Pawn specializations is the third topic here. Now, this is specializations are skills that pawns can learn and you can actually teach your main pawn one during your playthrough as well. You'll come across these specific tomes that you can get rewarded for quests and those sort of things that you can then learn to your main pawn. They can only have one active at a time and it's worth having pawns that have different specializations and some of them are really good in certain situations, some of them are not so much and some of them are just like personal preference, right? The first being the Chirurgeon to use curatives on the Arisen and allies. You'll see this one very common in like the early mid gamers. This is like the first one you can actually get from a certain quest. Woodland Wordsmith will lay you to interpret Elvish because the pawn will actually know Elvish. This is really, really valuable to have when you do talk to elves. So anytime you go to those locations, just make sure you're switching that up. The Forager will highlight rare materials on the map. Logistician will combine items and move items between inventories, help you with some of that inventory management. The Hawker will allow you to sell items. And the Aphanite won't speak, which is probably a good thing considering how much the pawns actually speak. But you've really got those options and you can then filter when you're looking at pawns and seeing what they have if you're looking for certain ones. Like personally, I've found that the Logistician is really good to help you combine items, move things around, like minimize some of that inventory management stuff. The Chirurgeon isn't bad either, especially if you're not running a mage support healer, but then any of them can really be successful, right? It's really just about considering that when you're picking your pawn and making sure you're using one that's valid for the situation that you're in. And another detail to point out here is we've talked about you picking pawns, but what about people picking your pawn? That's a bit of a tongue twister, but there's a couple of things you should think about here. First is, is your pawn visually appealing, right? That could just mean, you know, are they like really large when you're walking around like the rift and like they stand out? Maybe they've got a unique name or maybe they stand out in other ways, but whatever that way may be, it, you want to draw a potential Arisen's eyes to your pawn to actually have them then investigate further. And then obviously if they do investigate further, you want to do any of the stuff we've just mentioned in this video, right? Make sure they've got a good inclination specialization skills augments etc etc but another point that i have noticed as well especially for me when i've been picking pawns is have an actually rewarding pawn quest like a lot of these quests are like go and kill a minotaur and i'll give you one gold and it's like okay I'm not really going to do that. Like, like, why would I pick that pawn that has like a bogus quest when some other one might actually give me, you know, a fair amount of gold or maybe they want a specific trade and item for something else that's of value, right? Like a couple of them I've seen if they're looking for a certain item and then, you know, they'll give you some gold in return, something like that, right? Have some value there that you can actually then proposition them. And then obviously you've got the value of the kit that you're giving to your pawn. So just make sure that, you know, you've got the kit built out, right? They've got skills applied, they've got augments, all that stuff and then assign them a specialization that you think is relevant because it is important to have your pawn picked as much as it is for you to pick pawns as well. So then they can help you on the adventure as well. And people are actually using that and you get gifts and all that good stuff as well. So it's just fun to actually have. And the last major mistake and thing you should think about here is don't use the official pawns, right? For one, like let's help each other as a community, you know, like use each other's pawns, gifts, etc. And, you know, make sure you are giving gifts back when you're sending pawns back and giving thumbs ups and hearts and that sort of thing. Like don't send people like rotten meat, you know what I mean? But also the official pawns are poorly optimized for combat. In terms of their skills, they may not actually be using skills that are relevant to actually, you know, get the most out of their kids, but also especially their augments. For whatever reason, like any of their pawns, regardless of the level, the official pawns will only have a couple of augments specific to the vocation that they actually are. Whereas yourself and like pawns, community pawns, etc., can all learn augments from any vocation and equip them. So any of the community pawns will have significantly better builds, not only because we're intelligent, but also because you'll have augments from multiple vocations to really push that build a little bit further, min max their kit a little bit more so they can bring a bit more out of the build that that pawn actually is. But let me know your thoughts on the comments down below. Put your pawn ADs down below, give a little bit of a spiel about them, and maybe we'll actually add them to our games. But thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.